today. Ah, uh, okay. <clears throat> uh, Lama, I can present the prayers. Sure, go ahead. Perfect. Uh, Had to load them. I wasn't ready for it. Yeah, no worries. I don't think you can, Dirk. Oh, you mean I'm blocked? Yeah, I didn't have a chance to change it. Um, Matthew can change it. No, Matthew's not the moderator. I am. Oh, okay. Um, let me see if I can find it on my phone. <laughs> Someone found me near uh, coasters. Oh, those are nice. They look like cost plus or something. <laughs> <clears throat> so I was wrong, I can't. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so a good turnout here anyway. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Let me get some. <clears throat> uh I I can't find them, so uh hopefully someone can do them if they have a paper copy. Yeah, so why don't you take the uh, text back and you can just, well, let's start with saying my turn, right? Okay. Do they have the seven line prayer? Do you want me to lead it? I can do the seven line prayer from memory. Thank you, Dirk. Okay. <laughs> Again, you mean Johnson, they mugs are don't hold on. Yards and chuggy no Jesus. 
Praise to Shakyamuni Buddha, teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious, victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious, victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. When you, chief of humans, were born, you took seven steps on this great earth, and you said, I am supreme in this world. To you who are wise at that time, I prostrate. Completely pure body, supremely fine form, ocean of wisdom like a golden mountain, fame that blazes in the three worlds, supreme protector, to you I prostrate. Endowed with the supreme marks, a face like the stainless moon, a color like gold, to you I pay homage. The three worlds are not like you who is free from dust. Matchless one, endowed with knowledge, to you I prostrate. Protector, endowed with great compassion, omniscient teacher, field of ocean-like merits and good qualities, to the thus gone I prostrate. Through purity, free from attachment, through virtue, releases from the evil gone realms, unique, supreme, ultimate meaning. To the Dharma that brings peace, I prostrate. From freedom, teaching the path, well abiding in the pure trainings, holy field endowed with good qualities, to the Sangha also, I prostrate. Homage to the Supreme Buddha, homage to the Dharma refuge, Homage to the great Sangha, to all three ever devout homage, to all worthy of respect, bowing with bodies as many as all realms, atoms, and all aspects, with supreme faith I pay homage. Do not commit any non-virtuous action. Accumulate virtue and goodness. Subdue your own mind. This is the teaching of the Buddha. Like a star, a mirage, a lamp, illusions, drops of dew, bubbles, dreams, lightning, and clouds. Look at all conditioned phenomena as such. Due to this merit, having attained the state of the all-seeing and thereby subduing the enemy of faults, may I liberate migrators from the ocean of existence, stirred by the waves of aging, sickness, and death. I take refuge in the guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge until I'm enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. 
by the positive potential I create by listening to the Dharma, may I attain Buddhahood in order to benefit all sentient beings. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free of suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings be inseparable from the joyful happiness that is free from suffering. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from holding some close and others distant. Respectfully, I prostrate with my body, speech, and mind. I present clouds of every type of offering, actual and imagined. I confess all my negative actions accumulated since beginning this time and rejoice in the virtuous actions of all ordinary and noble beings. Please, Buddha, remain as our guide and turn the wheel of Dharma until samsara ends. Through the merit created by myself and others, may the two bodhicittas ripen and may I attain Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings. This offering I make of a precious jeweled mandala, together with other pure offerings and wealth, and the virtues we have collected throughout the three times with our body, speech, and mind. O oh, my masters, my yidams, and the three precious jewels, I offer all to you with unwavering faith, accepting these out of your boundless compassion. Please send forth waves of your blessings. Yidam guru radna mandalakam niratiyami. Heart of the Perfection of Wisdom Sutra, Arya Bhagavati Prajna Paramita Hridaya Sutra. I prostrate to the Arya Triple Gem. Thus did I hear at one time. The Bhagavan was dwelling on a mass of vultures mountain on Rajagriha, together with a great community of monks and a great community of bodhisattvas. At that time, the Bhagavan was absorbed in the concentration on the categories of phenomena called profound perception. Also at that time, the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara looked upon the very practice of the profound perfection of wisdom and beheld those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Then through the power of Buddha, the venerable Shariputra said this to the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara. How should any son of the lineage train who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom? He said that, and the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara said this to the Venerable Sharidevaputra. Shariputra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom should look upon it like this, correctly and repeatedly beholding those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Form is empty, emptiness is form. Emptiness is not other than form. Form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, discrimination, compositional factors, and consciousness are empty. Shariputra, likewise, all phenomena are emptiness, without characteristic, unproduced, unceased, stainless, not without stain, not deficient, not fulfilled. Shariputra, therefore, in emptiness, there is no form no feeling, no discrimination, no compositional factors, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form, no sound, no odor, no taste, no object of touch, and no phenomenon. There is no eye element and so on and up to and including no mind element and no mental consciousness element. There is no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance, and so on, and up to and including no aging and death, and no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there is no suffering, origination, cessation, and path. There is no exalted wisdom, no attainment, and also no non-attainment. Sharputra, therefore, because there is no attainment, Bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the protection of wisdom, the mind without obscuration and without fear. Having completely passed beyond error, they reach the end point of nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifestly completely awakened to unsurpassable, perfect, complete enlightenment in reliance on the perfection of wisdom. 
Therefore, the mantra of the perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, the unsurpassed mantra, the mantra equal to the unequaled, the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering should be known as the truth, since it is not false. The mantra of the perfection of wisdom is declared. Dayate gate gate paragate parasamgate bodhisoha. Now we'll do that silently 21 times. Sayate gate gate paragate parasam gate bodhi soha. Sariputra, the bodhisattva mahasattva should train in the profound perfection of wisdom like that. Then the Bhagavan arose from that concentration and commended the bodhisattva mahasattva Arya Avalokeshvara, saying, Well said, well said, son of the lineage. It is like that. It is like that. One should practice the profound perfection of wisdom, just as you have indicated. Even the Tathagatas rejoice. The Bhagavan, having thus spoken, the Venerable Shari Devaputra, the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokeshvara, those surrounding in their entirety, along with the world of gods, humans, Asuras, and Gandharvas, were overjoyed and highly praised that spoken by the Bhagavan. To fulfill the needs of all beings at their various levels of understanding, we request that you turn the wheel of Dharma, including the lesser and greater common and extraordinary approaches. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, good morning. Happy Saga Dawa again. Uh, this is a month where we uh, celebrate and realize uh, birth, realization, and parinirvana death. So we say we, uh, of course, uh, historically focus on the historic Buddha Shakyamuni, but uh, Sagadawa uh, on an inner level is about uh, our own birth, uh, realization, and uh, parinirvana, isn't it? <clears throat> but when we say our, uh, we have to use the personal pronoun, so we can also say it's about birth, realization, and uh, death <clears throat> all at once. So uh, from, if I could use the term Dzogchen perspective, uh, we want to flash or start there. Um, it's uh, all immediate and happening at once. <clears throat> uh, it's so intense, of course, that uh, we tend to uh, uh, have a trauma response to our own experience and we um, uh, flee it or forget it. And then the trouble starts, doesn't it? But uh, we eventually can come to appreciate it all at once. We have the stability and the resources to uh, digest it all at once. But until we do, uh, we have to um, digest it or eat our large family pizza one bite at a time, okay? So uh, in the total presentation, we present things happening immediately and step by step simultaneously because it's all happening at the same time. We're developing and there's nothing to develop. So I'm wondering, uh, is the voice loud enough for everybody? Is that picking up okay? Yeah, good. So from religious side, uh, devotional side, gratitude side, um, we, we do give thanks to Shakyamuni and uh, to all our teachers, right? 
So when we say Shakyamuni, when we say the Buddha, um, we are mentioning the historic Buddha, but we're also uh, thinking of our teachers too. Um, uh, so we're not excluding that. So uh, just like when we take refuge to the guru, um, it's not just uh, necessarily one person, right? It's not uh, the sense the guru isn't a person or just a person. So <clears throat> the uh, inner world uh, problem is one of identity. Who's doing all this? And why do we put uh, our identity uh, on a fixed notion instead of uh, open awareness? Why not just, why does anything have to go wrong? Why don't we just kind of stay, stay realized? <laughs> why, why do we forget, you know? And, and then why do we uh, take um, ourselves out of awareness and turn uh, uh, open awareness into solidity or a solid self? <clears throat> does anyone know how that happens? Was anybody there when it happened? <laughs> no. <laughs> so we can say like samsara is uh, endless, um, but uh, realization uh, can, uh, it can be, it has a beginning list, but it can end. So uh, we can be there to wake up from the dream, right? <clears throat> so in our tradition, we not only wake up, but we wake up to something. So when people say, I like to become enlightened, um, it's reasonable to say, well, that's very good, but what do you want to become enlightened to? So uh, there's both the process of awakening or just being awake, and then there's also content. So when we're celebrating Sagadawa, we're celebrating uh, religiously uh, the content on a personal basis, Siddhartha and all our teachers with gratitude, with celebration, with remembrance. I think this is a big part of uh, human experience and the human journey. Uh, sometimes, you know, people are down on religion uh, of course, for many good reasons, institutional uh, problems and hypocrisy and all that and bureaucracy. Um, however, to have a temple, uh, we need to have organization too, right? And uh, hopefully though, the main point of religion is not uh, strictly organizational or bureaucratic, but it's uh, coming from a deep sense of uh, gratitude and heart opening and uh, devotion, uh, not in a, a limited way, but in a, a primordial way. Uh, while uh, I was on vacation um, last week, uh, I always get time to do my practice because I get up early, but had some extra time to do reading because I wasn't talking to so many people. So uh, I picked up a copy of uh, uh, Stephen Batchelor's, uh, I think, Beyond Beyond Buddhism is this book. And uh, he tries to interpret uh, Dharma in a, a secular way. Um, I think he makes a mistake by just going back to the Pali suttas because he believes those are um, more original than the Mahayana suttas. Um, they might be time-wise, but... Um, that doesn't mean they're necessarily are, were and are the only words of original Buddha. But in any case, um, <laughs> yeah, in any case, um, uh, he says, well, I don't like doing prayers or mantras or rituals. I just want to be appreciative of the moment, right? <clears throat> and uh, who can argue with that, right? We want to be appreciative of the moment. But um, the moment for me does include um, all my memories and includes uh, everybody in the room here, everybody in uh, video land, right? Um, and the moment uh, doesn't include just uh, sensate experience. Uh, 
and clarity, but it also has gratitude and aspiration and awe and wonder, uh, which uh, is absolutely needed to uh, create a full Buddhahood from our point of view. So from our point of view, we could say we're not being a nuisance and we're paying attention and we're staying with our six senses. So we're being clear about um, what we're thinking, we're being clear what we're smelling, clear about what we're tasting and touching and hearing and so forth. But uh, the secular Dharma approach, uh, which I, I wanna do here too, but with a difference, uh, it can still have a sense of uh, gratitude and devotion, right? It can still have a sense of awe and um, a sense of uh, heart opening, don't you think? But uh, the good part about a self approach is that we don't have to have gratitude or belief or um, aspiration or devotion to something we don't understand or haven't met, right? So why should we say, okay, I wanna celebrate um, the Buddha's birth or Shakyamuni's birth and enlightenment uh, and Parinirvana, because I've never met the Buddha, right? I haven't met Siddhartha. <clears throat> so uh, my teachers always suggested, well, pick someone or uh, some animal, some living being, uh, or maybe even the universe, because the universe is alive. And for that, generate a sense of uh, gratitude, a sense of aspiration, a sense of devotion, a sense of caring and uh, start uh, the journey there. So notice uh, when you gave birth to uh, that sense of appreciation, notice when you totally woke up uh, to uh, the preciousness of life and notice uh, when we pass that on to others, what our legacy is, which is death. So I think it's possible to have a secular dharma where we can say, well, I don't know if I believe, or I don't know, I haven't met the Buddha or Shakyamuni, I haven't met Dalai Lama, I don't even know Lama Jinpa very well, he could be nuts or something, but uh, I do, <laughs> I do, I have met uh, a sense where my heart started to open up, where I have a sense of gratitude and uh, a sense of realizing those qualities in a sense that I want to preserve and pass it on, right? So from the inner sense, uh, we uh, can have a secular dharma, even when we haven't uh, performed the regular uh, religious pilgrimages, even when we say, well, I haven't uh, met uh, any dharma teachers, I feel uh, confident yet, but I have a sense of uh, heart opening and gratitude for life, gratitude for the people I've tried to help, gratitude for my pets and gratitude for nature and so forth. What do you think, you know? So uh, I think we can have a secular Dharma that isn't, um, if I could say so, Protestant. <laughs> so Stephen Bastard says, well, I'm a white Protestant male living in France. And I go, well, that's, that's good, but um, maybe a little bit too Protestant, I don't know. So uh, I think we can have a very warm and uh, grateful world um, view uh, that we could call secular, secular in the sense that uh, we're developing uh, faith and devotion, openness based on, on what we know presently, right? What we've already experienced. So uh, it becomes a lineage in a sense, or um, uh, religious or um, realization when uh, we also have uh, openness and uh, devotion and open heartedness uh, to what we don't know. <laughs> so uh, you, what we don't know from an inner world means that we can't we cannot objectify natural awareness, right? <laughs> you can't say, uh, I'm standing outside um, Rigpa, I'm standing outside Yeshe, uh, realizing it. I just had a Yeshe realization. 
No. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's why, you know, sometimes from the Zen perspective, um, they say, you know, like Bodhidharma said, I, I don't know. Right? Don't know mind. Now, when I say that, you know, of course, Zen has these jokes. Or I call them Prajna Paramita jokes, right? These jokes, like, when you say don't know, it means we can't objectify it. We can't stand outside primordial awareness and look at it as an object. You think you can? You can't. We can do that, you know, for limited uh, mind. We can do that for, like, in Tibetan, they say Sam, uh, for, like, or Vijnana, right? Vijnana means like jhana, but with a vij, so vid. So divided, divided consciousness, we can say, I'm here and you're there. So we can say, uh, uh, we can hold mind as an object. Uh, but when we're talking about uh, primordial awareness or alpha awareness, um, then we can't have it as an object. So our journey uh, is going to, however, entail uh, objectifying mind in a conscious way instead of an unconscious way. And then finally come to the point where mind doesn't have to see itself, it just knows itself. And of course by mind, uh, I don't mean uh, conceptual mind like uh, uh, thinking, uh, we know mind just in the sense of knowing or becoming intimate with. <clears throat> so this knowing or uh, process of knowing or becoming intimate with is uh, what I like to call the Shambhala journey, <clears throat> where we're becoming more familiar and intimate with ourselves and all phenomena and all beings. <clears throat> but uh, it doesn't have to, uh, at first, be based on things we don't know. It can be based on uh, everyday world and uh, things that uh, we just know. So that could be kind of secular, right? But as we uh, progress um, in the path, uh, in some ways we know more, right? But then in some ways, uh, you know, we uh, know less. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, you know, one of my uh, Dzogchen teachers, um, uh, Chaji Ramshe, is now in um, at Denver. <clears throat> it's actually like a, a Kagi Lama who studied closely with Dzogchen Rinpoche. Uh, so I'd ask him what, uh, what kind of conversations. <laughs> So he'd say, yeah, I had these conversations where I'd asked uh, Dujan Rinpoche, like, well, what do you think is going to happen with this person? Or what do you think is going to happen to you? Or what do you think is going to happen to the world? Or what do you think is going to happen um, with this Dharma Center? And what do you think Dujan Rinpoche's reply to Choji Rinpoche was? Does anybody want to guess? I don't know. <laughs> you know so uh, uh, I asked my own teacher about this, and uh, for once he wasn't cagey. <laughs> but he said, "Yeah, you don't need to know. When you're everything, you don't need to know. There's no need to know. There's nothing outside you. There's nothing as an object. So why do you need to know? Don't need to know, right? What is that? Yeah, nice. What is leaf? Pardon me? Yeah, Dirk said something. I missed, so. oh. oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know my mic was on. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I, okay. I said, what is there to know? <laughs> yeah, what is there to know? Yeah. So this, we could say, you know, a little bit um, Prajnaparamita style, uh, there's a knowing beyond knowing, you know? So it's a different kind of knowing. Not it's not a subject object knowing. You no. Know? So uh, so sometimes I use the example for Mahamudra of, of gravity. Can you make gravity, uh, you know, an object? And you say, well, I'm going to investigate gravity, or is it? I mean, is it? It's just there. 
So to demonstrate gravity, can, you know, maybe we just hold something up. I don't need to drop it, right? To demonstrate it, because <laughs> I feel the pull, right? So uh, I don't have to stand outside gravity to know it, right? <clears throat> Uh, human beings, we get confused, of course, because um, we have private experience and then we have shared experience and we have public experience. So um, in a weird way, um, no one can uh, have exactly our experience, isn't that right? So if, if I pinch myself, can we feel the pain? No, you might have some mirror neurons, you might be able to replicate because the mind is very um, good at that. You could replicate. So you could say, I, well, I'll pinch, or you could even do now, I'll pinch myself, so I'll have pain <laughs> too. But uh, it's still private, right? So, uh, and then we see others uh, and we see them pinch ourselves like this, but we don't feel it, right? So uh, as human beings, we get confused, right? It seems confusing, right? So from kind of one kind of mind that objectifies after um, we've fallen into marigpa, you know, non, non-awareness, non like we should feel everything. You, when, when I pinch myself, you should all feel it, right? That's how ignorance thinks. Or when you pinch yourself, I should feel it. That 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 would be called objectifying, right? Because then then it's it's totally out there. So, um, <clears throat> but we can't do that. But we imagine we can. We imagine that uh, we can do that. That's a mistake, right? <laughs> So uh, realization is like uh, we have all our own private experience. Does that sound contradictory? So Lama, you. are you saying there's no such thing as empathy? Empathy is we're interested and want to understand someone else's experience, but empathy is not the same as identity. Pardon me? Is it intuition? What's intuition? The awareness of... mm, we, don't, we don't need, if you're pinching yourself, you don't need to intuit it, right? Do you? You don't need to go, well, let me look within and see what that feels like. No, I just, they have it. How about the analogy that if you pinch your arm, you don't feel it in your foot? <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. That's interesting, isn't it? That doesn't mean uh, that doesn't mean we're separate from our foot, does it? <laughs> so, uh, Buddha Dharma, particular higher teachings like Mahamudra Dzogchen, are uh, kind of flip it on its head because, from Vijnana point of view, from divided consciousness, we would think that realization would mean we're feeling everyone's pain, or they can all feel ours, like it's one big, you know, tapioca pudding, right? And this is what the Buddha was criticizing. <clears throat> no, this, it's not one big Atman Brahman structure. Like, uh, everyone has uh, our own private experience, but the private experience uh, is not based upon uh, an individual identity. Am I going too deep today? <laughs> I know, sometimes people, well, you know, it's like, why, why do you always go into these deep talks? So I'll give a, you know, I'll just give a, a normal talk. Like, look, just be more patient with people, okay? And don't be so annoying and don't be a nuisance, okay? <laughs> and just do some more Dharma. Okay, did you, did you get that? Okay, so <laughs> we got that covered, okay, so. <laughs> 
I mean, it's good to hear those sermons, right? We do need to hear that every once in a while, be reminded, like, just be some more patient, be nice to people in your paths and, you know, don't be a nuisance and, and try to be mindful and awake. That's, that's always good to hear. But <clears throat> we need to go into the process of how we actually wake up. So, <clears throat> yes. Um, so conceptually, this makes me think about um, I've watched certain groups, monks, or nuns take action towards um, great harm in the world, completely separate from maybe where they grew up or where they have a home, but uh -huh. in a separate country. Mm -hmm. Is that similar to this thing? I mean, this is like a bigger level of the same idea where you're connected. Right, a harm there is impactful on everything, even if you don't necessarily feel it. Like you're stuck and connected mm -hmm. to that, even if you're not specifically experiencing it, where you that. Um, so by helping to resolve that, you help to resolve the whole. Yeah, so Sasha is asking interesting question here. Okay. Yeah, so, but yes, we're connected, but we're connected in a different way than we normally think from divided consciousness. We, um, uh, we're connected because uh, our situation is for each of us is intimate and private. Uh, intimate and private means each of our situations is the whole universe. In other words, there's nothing outside of your own experience. So when there's nothing outside of our own experience, then we have this interesting realization there's nothing outside my whole universe and you have your whole universe. So uh, there's nothing outside of our uh, own experience. But when you say own experience at this point, it doesn't mean our own personal experience. That's, that's the tricky part. So through all our training, we learn to shift our identity from bringing back to uh, uh, a fixed center to a centerless center. So uh, we can say in a weird way, experience owns its own experience. There's nothing outside its own world. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I probably can't. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, we we all have an experience of gravity. Do you own gravity? But we all have our own private experience of gravity. But we don't own it, do we? When you realize we all have our own private experience of gravity, but we don't own it, something shifts inside. Don't you think? <laughs> we don't have to have uh, this, uh, we don't have to own uh, our experience. So from a limited point of view, we think, well, I'm gonna own my experience and then I'm gonna share it from there. And that's just expansion or grandiosity of ego, right? Are you talking about the story we tell? Yeah, it, it does involve the story we tell, our identity. So in the, uh, you know, birth, realization, and uh, death, then we're talking about this inner journey uh, that moves things from uh, away from uh, a fixed identity, but it doesn't move things away from personal and private and intimate. Because uh, if, if you say everything's kind of public, then uh, you, we become kind of fascist, actually. We take away the, your own personal agency. We take away your own personal initiative, your own boundary, right? So for example, like when kids are growing up in real dysfunctional families, there's no privacy, right? So when I used to work with kids that they would, parents would like remove their doors or you wouldn't have any doors or they, people would just walk in on people, right? No, no private world, right? 
the private world is invaded. You have no private world. So a response to the no private world trauma is that then a child has to go deep within again, right? Has to create inner magical world. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but uh, when we have the proper boundaries and we realize interdependence, then we each get to have like our private world. Uh, we get to have our own private experience of gravity, just to use that term, or space, or time, uh, but uh, it's shared at the same time. Let's see, Annette had a question or a comment. Can I just put a mention on computers? Um, Thank goodness. So for the private experience, what actually experience will be experience? Yeah, that's right. That's the right <laughs> question. That's totally the right question. Yeah, so uh, that's the process of investigation and realization. So, you know, uh, if we don't uh, posit a personal uh, self that owns it, that exists from its own side, that maintains a subject-object duality, that seems uh, to totally be defined from its own side, you know, who's experiencing all this, right? How do we communicate both? Yeah, but it's it works. That's what's odd, right? If we say, you know, that the the center of gravity of ourselves is outside ourselves, then we make up a deity outside who has to be the holder of our experience, right? Has to be the verifier of our own experience. But in Dharma, we have this paradoxical situation where we that our experience is private but shared at the same time. It just doesn't have to be owned. Whereas usually in the samsaric world, private means own, you know, private means you know, trespassing, you know, like that. <clears throat> but we can have private experience and uh, share it. Because I can say, well, all you have to do to experience gravity is you hold up your arm and then drop, right? Gravity does the rest, doesn't it? Do you want to try it? We all had it, right? <laughs> Lama, this is reminding me of, uh, of Lama Tony's explanation of the term flung. Would you, is that, uh, we're, well, what he said was that you, it's the experience is being in the center of, being in the center of space, but that it's no big deal that it's you in the center. Is it, yeah, is, I, is it you analogous know, to that idea? Yeah, yeah. So. Um, yeah, I, I sometimes like using gravity instead of space, because sometimes we get spacey about space, you know, we get conceptual about, you know, we get conceptual about the space, you know, where it's, it's so easy, we just like, there's gravity, I mean, like that. So um, gravity is like an energy, you know, like that. Um, yeah, and the scientists don't understand it either. <laughs> so. I know, it's a don't know, like. <laughs> um, yeah, the uh, kind of the metaphor of space um, has to, you know, include this sense of non-obstruction, you know, non-obstruction. That's how the, in India, on the Sanskrit, they define space. So non-obstruction, then, then it makes more of sense. You know, so how do we experience non-obstruction like real freedom? And that, that's very profound, right? So if we say, how do you experience like not hitting anything when you wave your arm? What, what would you say? How would you communicate that experience? And yet we have it. Sasha has a comment. Okay. Um, so why can't I feel it when you pinch your arm? Is it because you aren't sharing it with me or is it because I can't see it? <clears throat> because it's private. Yeah, but, but it, it, but why, if there isn't a shared, why would there be a necessity to cancel? Shared doesn't mean, uh, shared doesn't cancel privacy. That's why, you know, like we're both experiencing gravity, right? We're sitting on the cushion and you can feel, okay, heavy. But we don't have to. We don't have to say you. I have your gravity, and you have my gravity. Yeah. So, like, 
space, we, we both share the space, but we have our own private experience of it. Whereas misperceived self feels like we have to own the space or own the gravity, and then we objectify it like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, generally, uh, uh, in Mahamudu and Zogchen, but particularly Zogchen, using that like uh, great expanse Longchen, you know, where you know there's there's absolutely no obstruction. We usually feel we're hampered or obstructed by something. Something's in the way, right? Like if they would just get out of my way, I'd be happy. If that those thoughts would just go away, those emotions would just go away. I just want to get rid of my blah blah, right? It's always that. Blah blah. How do I get rid of my blah blah? <laughs> <laughs> well, you hire an attorney. <laughs> like, so uh, it's really weird to like, you don't have to get rid of anything. Well, the, there's no, you're not hitting anything. So let's say we're totally delusional, which we generally are. And you go, you know, there's a problem. I have a problem. There's this pillar that follows me around every day, this metal pillar. And Every time I, you know, wave hi to somebody, I hit the pillar. You know, every time I do this or pick up my arm, I, I hit the pillar and and I hurt my arm. What what how would you work with that person? The light on. Well, the light's on. That's not a bad idea. Like, yeah, it's like turn the light on. Yeah, that might work. You know, here's a flashlight, and they go, "Okay, thanks." Very concrete. That might work. Yeah, let's say this. You know, I like the pillar follows me around. Yeah, this is a famous. Uh, you know, like, ask it. Like, why are you following me around? You know. Okay. So we know from a wisdom mind, there's actually no obstruction. There's no pillar, right? Mm -hmm. But the person has a delusion. Yeah, they don't believe you, you know. So, uh, you know, we could say all the teachings, in, you, know, uh, you know, are generally like skillful. There was a famous uh, psychiatrist, hypnotherapist, Milton Erickson. Uh, it was very interesting, and uh, he was called into uh, a, a psychiatric facility you know, maybe 50 years ago at this point uh, because one of the uh, patients wouldn't leave their room. That's a common thing, you know. If somebody doesn't leave their room, it's not hard. It's not so easy to get somebody out of a room, actually, <laughs> if you think about it, right? So, um, this, you know, so. They said, well, they hadn't, the staff had enough sense, like, well, why don't you want to leave your room? And the person said, well, there are these huge crevasses or these cracks in on the floor. And if I step over them, I'll fall in. And they would say, there's no cracks. You're fine. Come on out. There's, there's no cracks. You're making it up. There's no cracks. So they got nowhere with that. So they called Dr. Erickson. So uh, Dr. Erickson, said, does anybody could, said to one of the staff, could you get me some duct tape? Mm. What do you think? What do you think he did? He yeah, he says, got it. Okay, you tell me where the cracks are. We're going to cover them. So he got out his duct tape and uh, the patient walked out. So the teachings are like that. But yeah, but, you know, at some point we, Usually, when we get out from you know this kind of uh, lam rim style of practice, skillful means, then we're out of the jail cell or out of the room. Then, then in a sense we're out, but we're only kind of halfway out because we kind of go, great, thanks for duct taping the cracks. You know, mm -hmm. would have been there forever. You know, we're out, and there's that shift of being out. But then we have to receive the pith instruction right in the moment saying there, there are no cracks there. 
And the mind has to see, oh, there are no cracks. I could have stepped out at any time. So you, it's funny, you know, step-by-step -step practice gets you to like, you're out of the cell, but you still don't recognize how you got out or there was never a crack. So the journey, you know, the real birth, realization, death is like, you, you do the step-by-step -step practice and hopefully you have the right teacher at the right time who says, um, you know, look back, do you see any cracks? And you go, no cracks. There never was any cracks. And then, then you'll have uh, a real realization. But so the realization isn't just that I'm out. It, it's also, I have to realize there was never real cracks like that. So uh, it's a little bit afternoon. Um, <clears throat> so uh, maybe a couple more comments and then uh, people want to have their Memorial Day celebration or something. <clears throat> um, I'd just like to point out that according to my calendar, today is Patro Rinpoche's anniversary of his ah. Nirvana and yesterday was Mipan. Yeah, thank you. So, um, Bhattar um, uh was an extraordinary person and uh, present uh, Dalai Lama. Um, uh, likes to quote from Bhattar Rinpoche and uh, uh, was a Dzogchen master who, uh, whose favorite text in a way, he popularized and maybe ensured that uh, the Bodhisattva Charlie Matara would be taught, you know, entering the path of the Bodhisattva. So you'd think he would just be uh, teaching from uh, uh, Dzogchen Tantras all the time or something like that, but uh, he taught uh, this entering the Bodhisattva way that uh, Geshe has taught here from an entirely fresh perspective and uh, totally uh, revolutionized uh, the teaching in, uh, in Tibet. Uh, so uh, it's useful if people read his biography because uh, he was quite unconventional and um, I imagine would have been uh, very challenging to um, <laughs> study with, right? <laughs> like that. <clears throat> So, uh, and then, uh, you know, me, Bam Rimshe, uh, of course, uh, we'll be reading some of his works later in the Buddha Dharma study program. <clears throat> also a revolutionary figure. So, <clears throat> yeah, uh, <laughs> me, Bam Rimshe, uh, uh, frequently, uh, there are many stories about him where, um, he would not dress as a, a monk or a religious person at all and just go around and teach like that. And so many times people would uh, think he was just a beggar, apparently, like that. So that's why I think a really a good kind of tantric koan is, like, is it okay? Would it be okay if you were awake or enlightened or whatever and, and nobody recognized it? Would that be okay with you? Also, <laughs> okay, so what's next? We're all done? Are your knees hurting? Okay. <clears throat> so there's some people that have signed in. I, I, don't, I, I don't know if I can see everybody on the, um, the screen. Is that everybody today? Yeah, so sometimes. I, yeah, good. <laughs> like that. So from a practice point of view, uh, uh, I would be paying attention to how your experience is totally your own and uh, totally everyone else's too, and therefore unlimited. Like that. So because it's totally our own and unlimited and yours is totally our own and unlimited, we, we don't have to hand it over, right? So that's why the Buddha said, uh, uh, Buddhists do not transfer their realizations. 
don't need to. Don't need to do it. I, am I, I don't need to transfer gravity to you, right? I can just point out, look, put up, drop, okay, gravity. You got it? So we share that. We both, we, we all get gravity here, right? So you can say, okay, Sagadawa month <laughs> 2021, you, you all became enlightened to gravity. <laughs> it's your own private experience. No one else is having your experience, but it's also unlimited and universal, right? We get our cake and eat it too, and uh, this teaching, isn't that nice? <clears throat> so let, let's do prayers. Dedication. Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of a guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish but increase more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good, all powerful Chenresik Tenzin Gyatso. Please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish, and may the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness, and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Low song, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones, merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators. Please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of objectless compassion, Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom, Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Maras, Tsongkhapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages, Losong Dragpa, I make request at your holy feet. So a few, uh, we have a few moments for announcements. Um, I was, have an announcement like next month, uh, June 27th, uh, last Sunday, uh, I've invited uh, Kenshin Rinpoche to come uh, do a long life Amitayot um, initiation for us. So that we're just going to do my birthday celebration for that. So it'll be very traditional. Um, and that will be our uh, official opening like that. Um, so we haven't totally worked out the, <laughs> the health regulations, but uh, my hope is that uh, people will be vaccinated and so they'll be okay. And those that aren't, at least please be wearing a mask, right? So uh, we don't want you to get uh, ill. Maybe, uh, you know, it seems like overkill, but I wanted to go a little extra distance. I want to see everybody and see everybody uh, safe like that. Is that okay? So, uh, Dirk, do you have any announcement? It was, I, I'm sure there's some full moon practice coming up, right? You have to turn on your mic, I don't know. Uh, I don't have any comment or announcement really, except that we're continuing to uh, accumulate Mon Manjushri mantras. Yeah, thank you. So, um, <clears throat> So we, we have to, you know, we need, when we say Manjushri, um, Manjushri is like the, the mind that uh, is able to reflect without objectifying, right? Oh, yeah, there never was any cracks. <laughs> I'm free, you know, like that. Um, so we have the ability to uh, reflect uh, without objectifying. So one of the, um, you know, actually like it's like metaphor would say reflect. Um, one meditation like for moon meditation is uh, 
on a full moon, uh, you go out and you bring uh, bowls with you, uh, water, when you're offering bowls, and you see that the moon is uh, perfectly reflected. So um, the meditation is you realize the, the moon up in the sky didn't come down and make itself small to go into the bowl and the bowls didn't have to go into the moon, right? But, and even though this just one moon, uh, they could be reflected in seven bowls, right? So this is a um, metaphor for, uh, you know, aligned awareness, Majushri is that uh, there's, there's no need. Uh, we're just uh, these wonderful reflections or in those nets, we uh, are reflecting each other. And just like a mirror, like nothing's transferred when we look in the mirror, it's just reflection. Like my face doesn't go into the mirror, right? We have nothing go into my face. It's just uh, this interesting, magical reflection like that. <clears throat> <laughs> so uh, one of the practices is doing that to have that kind of uh, realization. We go, oh, we don't, uh, we don't need to like take a journey. We don't need, there were no cracks. It just uh, is happening spontaneously, right? So, um, you know, one of the... Uh, strengths of many uh, great teachers, they just point to uh, spontaneity. Um, but usually when we're stuck in dualistic mind, spontaneity comes across as being tricky, I know, you know. <laughs> well, well, why are you being tricky? I'm actually not being very tricky. You don't know spontaneous, <laughs> but uh, spontaneous. Uh, yeah, maybe that could be a cover for being tricky, but actually uh, it feels kind of magical and a little tricky, how, you know, from maybe childlike point of view. It's like, dad, how did you get the moon to come down into the bowl, right? You know, people have had kids, you ever done that? Try, you know, like, how did you do that, you know? Or just, I love magic tricks like stage, like how to get the rabbit out, you know? So, uh, uh, but it's, uh, it works on the principle of uh, spontaneity, right? So that's why, you know, we say very spacious and, and spontaneous unobstructed manifestation appearances are unobstructed and spontaneous. Okay, well, thank you everybody. Enjoy uh, the weekend, I hope. Ciao. Thank, thank you, Lama. <laughs> that was fun, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Patram Shay and Nipam. All right. Yeah. Thank you.